Hello. Today I'll be teaching about how to extract pictures from their background. Um, you have this folder called Photoshop Block Tree, and in, it includes some files that we'll be going through throughout this video. We'll first open up the one called One Extract and Montage, and in here is a file called Extracts for, for Montage, and we'll put it on a background afterwards. We've got three different backgrounds here. So this is the picture we're going to extract and one of these three pictures will be the one we'll be putting the picture on top of. So let's open this up. And let's close down Common Lecture. Be gone. Okay, so I'll show you how to make extractions. First off, I'll just show you the different tools we have for selections, making selections, because selections are the crucial part of extracting a picture. When I say extractions, it's a matter of removing the object from its background and perhaps making a montage onto another picture, taking the extracted picture and putting it onto a new picture, a new surrounding. Okay, so just a second. Okay, so we got some different selection tools up here. We got the rectangular key tool, elliptical key tool, single row key tool, single column key tool, and we got some different lassos, three of them, and quick selection tool and magic wand tool. We also got one additional tool, it's up here select color range. Okay, so first off, I'm going to tell you what the, these four do. Uh, rectangle and a key tool, you can click and drag to make a selection uh, and it will make a rectangle selection. If you hold down shift while doing so, it will make it square. Instead of being a rectangle, it will become a square. Meaning it will have identical proportions on both left to right to compared to top to bottom. Okay, so if you want to make something inside of this square, you can actually move around with it using the selection tools. Uh, if you want to put something inside of it, you could fill it up uh, with, for example, the foreground color over here on the left. You could fill it up with that one uh, by holding down Alt and then clicking Backspace. On some computers, uh, it's just called Delete, that key. So Alt, Delete, and you'll fill it up with brown. Okay, so what just happened? I made a, an error actually. It's very bad if you paint objects on top of the other picture. Because right now, if I wanted to move this object from one place to another, it's actually impossible. It will say, could not move this object. I could try selecting it again somehow. I'll just do something I'm not telling you about. I could try selecting it and then try moving it. And you'll notice it will just make a hole inside of the picture. So I'll just click undo a few times. You no, know, undo is just like going through history and going back in history. History, this is the panel history. With a lot of undo options in here. So before I made this change, uh, and before I made this change, I was going to fill some, some color into it. Notice that uh, I actually did something very bad to the picture. I used the move tool while the background layer was selected and what happens is I'm going to try moving something out of there. What is behind will become the background color. So I'm not going to do that. I, like I said before, you can move selections around using selection tools. So I'll just move this around with the selection tool. Uh, And then if you want to fill some color in it, you could just make a new layer. Um, and I'm just going to make a new layer by going down into my layers panel down here on the right. Uh, click on the create a new layer icon. Click. There we have it. And then I can fill it up with the foreground color. Let's take another color this time. I'll just click once on the foreground color here. 
and I'll choose some kind of red and then again alt and then backspace alt delete okay so if you wanted to fill instead the background color in it you could use command delete um, and for PC users that's control delete I want mine in red so that's alt delete alt backspace and now now I can move this around as much as I want I might as well remove my selection I don't need that anymore so I'm gonna say select deselect and now I can just move it freely around the picture if I wanted to I could actually make a selection with my rectangle and my key tool in here just select some part of it and then click delete and I could delete it to be whatever shape I wanted it to be okay so this is on a separate layer you notice that it's on a separate layer down here perhaps I wanted some infographics whatever um, and I wanted uh, or I just wanted design wise to have some kind of extra object going in here well then make it on a new layer okay you can do the same just by using elliptical marquee tool I'm just gonna make a selection here you can actually make um, elliptical shapes if you hold down shift while doing so you'll get a perfect circle instead and if I fill this with color alt backspace uh, and then try moving it you'll notice that I also move the other object that's because they're on the same layer layer so if you wanted them to move independently I suggest that you included this object on another layer so I'm just gonna make a new layer for this one I'm gonna fill it up with color like that and because it's on a new layer now I can actually move it around as I want and without it interfering in the other objects I'm just gonna select this object again and how do I select an object like this uh, because right now you see the selection is gone and I want to paint I want it painted uh, blue but if I hold down alt and click backspace it will just paint the entire layer blue blocking out anything beneath so to paint just this object I could select the pixels inside of it that's just a matter of right clicking on this layer where the circle is in and choosing the one called select pixels Okay, so now it's selected and I can hold down Alt and I can click Backspace. Another option, instead of just right-clicking and choosing Select Pixels, is actually just to Command, I'm just going to deselect, sorry, deselect, Command D. Another way of selecting an object is by holding down Command and then clicking the actual icon down here. Not the layer, not out here where it says the layer name, but inside of this icon right here, this small thumbnail. So I'm gonna command click right here. And on a Mac, I say command click. On a PC, that means control click. Um, okay, so now we got our blue circle and we got our red object. Um, if you wanted to again use the other tool, elliptical marquee tool, to make some changes, I could just cut right into it with, with my my selection tool and then click delete. Notice that if I if I try to do the same up here and move my my elliptical marquee into this object and I click delete, it's not going to do anything. That's because I'm on top of the wrong layer. I'm not handling layer one where this object is in so I'll just click on layer one and then I'll click delete so remember always to be in the correct layer you're only changing stuff in the layer you're in if it's by using tools in general for example if you crop the picture you will affect every layer inside the picture and with some tools you will affect other layers as well Okay, likewise, if you use layer styles, sorry, not layer styles, new adjustment layers, 
adjustment layers right here. You can affect several layers, but if you use image adjustments, which I shortly covered in the previous video, then using image adjustments you can affect one layer. So one layer is affected in image adjustment, several layers can be affected in adjustment layers. Okay, but in general, stick to being on the layer where you're supposed to work. And I'll just delete these two shapes right there, go away. You notice what I did? I'll just click undo. I selected one of them, hold down shift, select the other, then click on the trash can. Or click on the delete key. Okay. Next up, we'll just try the single Roma key tool. It's going to make a straight line through the picture. I, right now, this straight line is just one pixel. If I zoom in, I can see, yeah, it's one pixel. Very, very small. Okay, I can make this bigger by just saying select, modify, expand. That's going to expand this selection by X amount of pixels. So I'm going to say expand, and we're going to expand it to, let's say, 10 pixels. And that's going to make... No, let's say five because it's easier to see with five. Um, okay, so if I just go to somewhere where we actually got some information going on, perhaps his head, you'll notice if I zoom in, then you'll be able to see very quickly that this is in fact 11 pixels. I'll just start counting. You see uh, one pixel, two pixel, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, because it's 1 pixel times 5 on each side of it. Uh, sorry, 1 pixel plus 5 on each side. So that's 1 plus 5 plus 5, making out a total of 11 pixels. So if you wanted a width of, let's say, 7 pixels, you would just write expand three pixels because it's already one pixel one plus three plus three is seven okay enough about the math let's just get on with this i'm gonna make a new layer i'm just gonna fill it with blue alt backspace and then we have a blue color and it's gonna be a line running through the picture and you can just place it where you, you want uh, yeah, that's actually what this tool mainly does. And so will the column marquee tool uh, do. It, it'll just make them in columns instead. So, okay. Next up, we have the lasso. Lasso is not intended to select this entire object. Lasso will be like very difficult to get the entire selection of this object. I actually did that once, tried selecting an entire an entire picture of a person, uh, a drawing, and it took forever, uh, and then I learned that's not how to use Photoshop, that's, okay, so it's like more than 15 years ago that I did this, so please bear with me from back then. <laughs> okay, so you see this is just taking a lot of time, and, and, and you cannot do this in one big uh, one big workout <laughs> it will be very complicated to follow the entire figure all the way through and all the way down and whatnot so how do you add to what already exists and how do you remove from what already exists okay you hold down shift and then you see a plus a plus below the lasso that means that every time I draw something it's going to be added to the existing selection if you, were, if you forget to hold down shift, what will happen is just you'll draw a new lasso. So uh, I'll, I just clicked undo, hold down shift, then add to the existing lasso. Hold down shift. Really crucial. Okay, so if you include too much, you can hold down alt, and then you can start removing parts. You'll notice that there are some minus below the lasso whenever you hold down out and then you can just start removing okay so fundamentals of using a lasso is remember um, where you started because click then and drag whatever you want of selection 
and then return to your starting point. That must be your ending point. So wherever you started, you need to go back to that point because that will close the lasso. That will make it possible to make a close selection. What happens if you don't go all the way back? Well, this uh, right here is what will happen. I'm just going to make a beginning selection. And if I just right here, just release my mouse button, it will make a direct line between where it started and where I released it at the end. It will make a direct line. Try watching this. So there you go. So just a straight line between starting point and ending point. That doesn't always end out well. Uh, so just a good idea to always backtrack all the way back to the beginning point. Unless you know what you're doing. Okay, you see this is taking forever, so I'm just, just going to use a tool where it's going to go much faster. Uh, but first, the polygonal lasso tool, that's just click, 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 and you can make uh, straight lines, and it will make a selection like that. Next tool is magnetic lasso tool, and you can just start from any corner of this figure. It's best to start from a corner. I'll start down here, and I'll just start dragging it upwards across the figure. Oh, and here we got an error starting to draw into the air instead so I'll just click delete delete just to make it go backwards and you can actually you don't have to be this careful uh, when it comes to following the line you notice that it's actually quite good at noticing where it's supposed to go even though I'm so far away from act the actual pixels of the hand or the arm so I'm just following approximately the shape of the figure but oh there we got an error and if this happens whoops um, then it, you can actually just lead your way back but notice that when I click backspace 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 delete 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 it's just gonna put a new new anchor uh, saying that I want to be here so you have to actually to follow to follow your way back while clicking delete in order for it to delete the right anchors. Okay, so when I end up down here, I'm gonna click delete a bit more then. Right now, uh, if I have problems placing my, my anchor again, I can just click once, click, and it will place an anchor for you. And I'll just keep following. Blah, 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 blah. Let's do this very fast. You can do this entirely uh, at home. Let's say this is fine, I get to the bottom and then you notice from the lasso, if you release your lasso at one point it will go to your starting point. So I'm just gonna double click instead with this tool, magnetic lasso tool, double click and you'll notice that it makes what seems like a straight line but in fact it's not really a straight line, it's actually jagged a bit. That's because it tries to follow contrast. That's actually what it's doing when trying to make a, a line up, up uh, by his hip and arm and whatnot. It's trying to follow contrast. And since there's a lot of contrast in this, this picture, the shape of this child compared to the sky behind him, then the contrast, there's a lot of contrast between them. So magnetic lasso tool is going to be really easy to use on this picture. Okay, that was Magnetic Lasso Tool. Um, if I wanted to add some more, if, if I did it too fast, I could just... Um, hello, trying to select the right tool. What the... is going on? Hello! It's just showing a hand right now. Okay, I'll close down this picture. Don't save. Please reopen again. And then start. Why is this a handset? Okay, that's weird. I just clicked the space bar and it stopped being a hand. 
So if you draw it really quickly and it and it shows out to be a mess, boom, 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 then you can always start fixing it up. You can just hold down Shift and start adding segments. And I'll just draw this inside. And if you hold down Alt, you can draw from outside just to remove parts. Draw from inside to add parts with Shift Help Down. There we go. Very really nice. Sweet. And uh, so Alt and Shift, remember those two buttons when making selections. I'm not going to spend a lot of time making this selection because I know there are other tools which will be better for this kit right here. So I'm going to choose the magic wand tool which is located beneath the quick selection tool and I'm going to deselect this selection right here. So I'm going to say select, deselect, command D and I'm going to try start making a new selection. Okay, so this will work really bad for me. I'm going to try make some selections and you see nothing is really happening. That's because the magic wand is controlled by tolerance and I think the standard generic preset for tolerance is 32 as I recall. So if you try with 32 that's gonna not include the entire uh, child. So I'm just gonna set this to let's say 100 and try again. I'm gonna set it to 100 and see oh now it got almost off the kit. One problem about um, this tolerance is that it's not really always this easy to get most of the figure and you notice that actually that it's actually sticking to only select, selecting him but let's say if I start clicking shift shift clicking uh, on different portions of the picture you'll see suddenly oh there we have the tree the tree suddenly was a part of the selection that's because magic wand selects tones within a range of 100 uh, from dark to uh, to light. So if I select a medium light tone right here, it's going to select uh, 50 tones lighter and 50 tones darker, meaning a tolerance of 100. Um, and you know, when, in, when it comes to tones, when I say 100 tones, it's 100 of these 256. And it says 255, but you also got the value zero. Okay, <clears throat> so that tolerance actually uh, is the amount of pixels it will select within a range of 256 pixels, pixel values of light slash darkness. Okay, let's uh, remove this tree. I'm gonna hold down Alt. Uh, whoops, there went the entire selection. So perhaps I'll just deselect in general, that's Command D, and I'll try again right here. If you had contiguous switched off, you'll notice that it will not only uh, select the, the kit, it will also start selecting things outside of the kit. Down here, for example, there's a hole between the kit and the bush down here. But because I switched off contiguous, it's going to find those tones that I clicked on in every part of the picture. I'm going to switch this on because I do not want it to select anything that's outside of the child. Um, so switching contiguous on, I'll click once again and I'll hold down shift and just start clicking at random points because it's selecting uh, 50 tones to the left off and 50 tones to the right off the tone I'm actually clicking on. So shift clicking will start adding more and more and more uh, to my selection. But you'll notice when I zoom in that there are still a lot of areas that have not been yet removed uh, or selected. So I'm just going to shift click on that one. You'll notice, oh, now it starts selecting the sky. That's bad. So perhaps when you shift click next time, you could just change the tolerance to a lower value, let's say 50, and then shift click right close to it. And now it does not select any part of the sky. Uh, and it would only select that part of the sky if those colors close to each other were, were very close to each other tolerance wise. It's not going to select the same color out here somewhere if they are not connected, if they're not connected by pixels. So if I shift click right here uh, and have contiguous switched on, 
it's not going to jump all the way out here and start selecting stuff unless they were connected by a similar color all the way back to the hip. Actually right here before I start shift clicking uh, to select these parts of the hips I'll just change my tool to a lasso because the lasso is excellent for selecting small parts. I'll shift click and just get that as part of my selection. So you can use um, selection tools at once uh, together. Uh, you do not have to separate them so you can only use one selection tool for a purpose. You can actually combine them and use the full spectra of each tool to define your selection. The, the magic wand has a tendency of creating these small holes everywhere and so you really have to check your object thoroughly uh, afterwards because there might be holes going in all kinds of directions. I'm going to just remove this part and I'll do that manually with my lasso and I think there we have it. Whoops, <laughs> I shift click instead of alt clicking. There we go. Okay, I, I, th I think that's fine. I'm going to stick with that. But yet there is one fast way of doing this. I'm going to deselect, select, deselect, and finally take the quick selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag, and you notice that immediately actually it actually makes a selection. Good idea to have like 50 or, 50 or higher in, in brush size up here, um, 50 or higher, uh, then it will make a selection very fast. If the contrast is high between foreground and background, uh, between figure and background. Uh, and in this case, we must say that the, the, the contrast is very high. It's going to make, it's going to start calculating when you click and draw, calculate outwards. So it's going to figure out when does these dark pixels end and they end right here at the edge. So it's actually a, a mix of the edge abilities that magnetic lasso tool has combined with the uh, selection of a lot of different pixels by the magic wand tool. That, that's actually what quick selection does. It combines those two the best parts of those two. And now next part will be to remove the background. So I'm gonna, normally I would just remove the background um, if, if, if I was not to think about if it look got good, looks good. <laughs> If it was not important for me to think about, will this extraction look good or not? Well, then I could actually just invert um, the selection and delete the background. Why do I say invert? That's because right now he is selected. If I click delete, it's this guy right here who will be deleted and not the background. So, but before I even start inversing, I'll just try hitting delete. You see, then the, the fill menu shows up, the fill dialog box shows up and we're not going to use that because now we're trying to do something like filling color into him or we're going to try making a constant aware choice that's going to make him into a ghost. Ghosty boy, open thyself, show thyself to the world. You see that's not what we intended. Uh, so Remember to unlock the layer down here. So I'm just going to double click the background. You could also just click once on the lock right here if you're using a CC version of Photoshop. But I'm just going to double click and then I'm going to click OK. And this means it's no longer tied down, pinned down, meaning you can actually start deleting parts, erasing parts, and they will become transparent. So if I click delete now, you'll notice that it will just entirely delete this this child right here. So I'm going to click undo and I'm going to inverse the selection. That's select inverse, shift command I, inverse. So now the sky is selected. How can I see the sky is selected? You can just follow these marching ants at the top. Yep, we got the selection across the border. So I'm going to click delete now 
uh, and then we have an extraction. Okay, so this is tra extraction. I can tell you actually, this extraction is not gonna look nice. Um, so if if I just deselect, select, deselect, that's Command D, uh, and put in a new background color. I'm gonna create a new layer down here in the layers panel. Click to create a new layer. Then I'm gonna fill in some kind of color. I'm gonna make it stand in contrast to the blue dark color right here. So I'm gonna select perhaps an orange, orange, a light orange perhaps, and as my foreground color, since it's foreground color, I can fill it into my layer number one. Remember to have this one active layer number one. I can fill it in that by clicking Alt Backspace. Then I'll move this layer. Right now it's just a lot of color hiding actually the child behind. So I'll move this layer one downwards in my layer hierarchy so it's below the child. And by doing so, I get an impression of how it's gonna, he's going to look on some background color. I'm just going to uh, ch choose to zoom in. And you can actually see that he has kind of like a, a somewhat jagged area. It's, it's not looking, it's looking very tough. It's not like a transition that is, that is um, smooth. Aside from that, you can look at the hands. And here it's really, really jagged. Uh, and perhaps we actually also have some some air from the previous picture i'm just going to ch check right here you'll notice that there's some air right here i'm just going to select another color for the background just so you can even e more easily see it on your screen see you got this blue color between the fingers and that's not good okay so how can we um how can we make this extraction better you could actually start making the changes on this kit right now but you could also just do it right from the start so I'm just gonna go all the way back in history to my original picture and I'm just gonna quickly select with my quick selection tool I'm gonna quickly select this guy again and then I'm gonna do two things with this selection I'm gonna say select modify and then contract let's just check what happens if I contract I'm just going to go in real deep on this, this figure right here. Uh, and especially by the fingers, I'll check. Oh yeah, there is actually some air which is still located between the fingers. You see that there's grayish blue pixels from the air going inside of, of the hand. So what happens if I say, say select, modify, contract, and say to contract one or two pixels? I'm going to say two pixels just so we notice the difference. So notice here it goes all the way up here and it should then go down here when I say contract by two pixels. So let's check one, two, and that's going to be the edge right there. I'm going to click OK and you notice that, yeah, it's going to be one, two, and there we have it. Perhaps it extracts a bit more because it also extracts diagonal. So that's approximately two pixels in area space around all of the figure which makes uh, the the guy a bit thinner pixel wise but yeah he wants to lose weight that way we actually we make sure that n none of the sky is part of this extraction anywhere inside of it um, yeah so that's the first part the next part was I was talking about how jagged it looked. It looked very hard. The, there was no real soft transition going on between uh, him and the background. So next thing I'll do is click Select, Modify, Feather, just to make a soft transition on the selection. You will not actually be able to see this transition before you click for it to be deleted, the background. Then you'll be able to see it, uh, or unless you use quick mask. And I don't know why I'm pointing on the hand. The hand it's down here, <laughs> the quick mask. Uh, and sorry if I look very tired. It has been a long day with not enough sleep. Okay, modify feather and the value right here. I'm just gonna go with tree 
normally always use around one to five not more than that if i used like 40 let no let's let's say 80 uh, and then clicked for this background to be deleted i'm just gonna open it up i'm gonna open up the layer by double clicking it and then if i invert it shift command i and click delete you'll notice that he starts becoming a ghost or someone who's walking into the light and out of the darkness okay so i'm gonna click undo 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 until we got the normal selection again if you included a feather error on the selection and you decided not to go with that feather value it's not gonna remove the feather value by putting a new feather value there they're gonna be added together so it's gonna be two feather values on top of each other and the feather value is already kind of like a percentage so if you add a percentage to a percentage that's not gonna make one plus plus one or one plus two that's gonna make whatever percentage is added to whatever percentage you do the math just if you didn't want the one feather value you should not have chosen it so you should undo it okay so i'm gonna click for it to become tree and then i'm gonna click okay uh, so now we have a feather value of tree and you will not will not be able to see that you will not be able to see that actually uh, changing anything to to the selection perhaps you'll see it curve a bit more at, at, at corners but you won't be able to see that there is softness to it so how do we actually see that we unlock the background unlock the background and uh, so it becomes a floating layer uh, and then i'll click inverse select inverse for it to be the background that's selected and then i'll click delete and you'll notice now that actually we have a smooth transition very smooth transition from this object into the background and i'm just gonna make i'm gonna deselect i'm gonna deselect this object because if i don't i'm gonna fill the color into the area of the object let's let's just see make new layer and then alt backspace click and you'll notice down here in the thumbnail uh, thumbnail icon whoops i forgot to color the inside of the child so of course i'll deselect so when i alt backspace it's gonna fill in foreground color onto the entire layer i'm gonna move it beneath beneath the child and here we have it now we have a smooth transition between uh, the child and the background perhaps in some cases we still have a bit of the original sky some of the pixels from the sky but that, let's look more at that when we get into the next picture okay so let's say we are happy we are happy with this i'm just gonna remove my background here i don't need that anymore and i'm gonna open up a picture that i'm that i'll be placing him in so i'll say file open and i'm gonna find this picture uh, not inside of here but inside of whoop, inside of block tree photoshop block tree and here we're gonna take okay i'm gonna take montage background number two because i used background number three earlier today while teaching you can take whatever background you want okay to move this guy from one picture to the other by clicking the different tabs to change pictures i could just take my move tool and click and drag from this picture up onto the tab the other tab then move it down inside the picture and release your mouse button and there we have it so i'll just do that again move him with the move tool the black arrow i know it's white if you have a black version of the program so let's just call it the move tool i have a tendency of calling it the black arrow always move it up to the tab then hold it down there for a second then move it down into the other picture okay cool other ways you could right click on the layer not the thumbnail but layer right click duplicate layer 
and in here choose for it to have a destination which is the other document boom and now it's inside the other document you could also just select all select all that's edit and sorry that's select and all command a and then choose copy and go into the other uh, picture and say paste you could just go into window arrange say let's say two up horizontal then just click and drag from one picture to the other you could move it from your desktop into photoshop um, and yeah inside an open picture of photoshop let's see how that could be done you could just make your program a bit smaller and put your files out here and then you could actually drag something inside of another picture see now i put the other picture inside of this one i think that's enough it's enough for now that's enough for now hello why is Enzo not working don't say okay but we got this child we got this child inside of this picture now he's a bit too big so i'm just gonna uh gonna say command t for free transform command t free transform I'm gonna make him smaller and i think this will be his size uh, perhaps a bit smaller this this will be his size okay so when i'm happy with his the size of his oh man i need a cigarette okay so give me a second to smoke a cigarette and then i'll come back and make these changes so let's take a break Okay, so I just recorded for 30 minutes and uh, it showed out that the uh, Camtasia crashed really, um, really much fun. I love it. Okay, so this kid right here, we need to lighten him up. First thing to do is image adjustment levels. And I'm just going to change the levels, going to drag it from to the left. We had something about levels in our last video. I'm gonna take the mid-tones, crank that up, so we have kind of like a decent balance in darkness and and light with with fair mid-tones. Gonna click OK. I think this is fine, even though he's a bit fruity. Next up, I'm gonna change the image adjustments. Photo filter, gonna make him into a color which is more fitting to the background gonna crank up the density so I'm, I can see what I'm doing this is uh, not the proper color by going through all of these you'll figure out that sepia is whatever comes closest but still it's not entirely what I want so I'll just click on color then I'll just randomly choose not randomly choose but I'll choose the most fitting to whatever background it is so I'm gonna I'm going to choose the filter first, then customize it down in color. And I'm going to crank down the color a bit in density. And that will probably give a fair result. I'll click OK. So first off, image adjustments, levels, then photo filter. Next off, I'll go to color balance or hue saturation, just to change um, how the coloring is inside of him. In color balance, we change mid-tones, shadows, and highlights. We remember to preserve the luminosity, and I'll just start making him look better compared to the background. Always compare with background, because on one background, he'll need to look like one thing. On another background, he'll need to look like something entirely different. And I think this is... This is approximately fine. I'm going to click OK. 
then choose image adjustment shoe saturation and okay in here we can choose to change the hue making him a totally different color um, so that's not gonna work uh, and we can change the saturation to make him stand out in colors or to just remove the colors they're not gonna work lightning lightness that works like crap in in the master channel so in general stick with not doing that what was that sound if my camera crashed once again I'll start kicking ass okay okay so he has a lot of blueness in him or greenness so I'll go to the green channel and I'll crank up that saturation we'll see yeah there's a lot of green in him I'm gonna just crank that down a bit so he has less of that saturation I don't want that much much green in him and then I'm gonna choose science gonna crank that up just to see oh yeah we got a lot of sign in him. take the saturation down a bit so he, he's not as blue as he was already and then perhaps the blue one I'm just gonna crank that up oh we got no blues uh, we got all almost no blues I'm just gonna leave that be okay I'm gonna change the yellows um, let's see how much of the yellow is in it oh a lot I'm gonna just put that down a bit and perhaps adjust it to another color I think that's a bit better perhaps also the reds gonna crank them up yeah we got a lot of red there put them down a bit in saturation perhaps change the hue a bit I think that's better compared to the building I'm gonna click OK so now we've changed some parts of the child. Uh, we are, he's also got some kind of blue stuff going on his, in his hair, which is very, very obvious. So I'm going to make a selection with a lasso uh, in the area of the topmost part of his head. Um, and it will not affect anything uh, that is outside of his head, because check out if I turn off my, the visibility of my background, there's nothing there. It's only affecting one layer, and if you want to affect several layers, you would use uh, adjustment layers instead. Nothing about that in this video. Sorry. Um, okay, select, modify feather. Gonna set that to around 50. We really need a long transition between hair uh, in selection because we do not want people to see where we made the exact color change. So we need a big transition. Feather radius 50, that's going to be appropriate for this picture. And then afterwards, I'm going to choose image adjustment, hue saturation. And I'm just going to put the saturation down. Uh, perhaps not on the entire picture, so I'm just going to remove this value again. And choose for it to be cyan, perhaps. Yep, he has a lot of cyan there. Going to put the saturation down. And that brings his hair into a more normal state of occurrence. I'm going to deselect and then I'm going to change the background. So I'm going to click the background once. And here we're going to do exactly what we've been going through with the rest of the picture. Going to change the levels. Um, that's image adjustment levels. Going to change the background. Uh, actually, you have to look out for changing this the highlights because there's some text in the building which will be lost. Because this picture already had a lot of highlights. So I'm not changing that much to highlights. I'm going to check out how the mid-tones do. And that's perhaps a bit better. Not going to change that much to the dark tones. Uh, perhaps just a bit. Okay, so this was better. I'm going to use next up the photo filter image adjustment photo filter. Probably going to use sepia because I used that before. And um, perhaps readjust it. So it gets better. There we got it. And uh, perhaps at a higher density. It's much better with the child. I'm going to click OK. And now the sky is brown, so that's not OK. So I'm just going to select with Quick Selection Tool my background. And I'm just going to do it roughly because I don't want to spend time doing that. If this was a very important composition for you, you'd use time on that. 
quick selection tool always adds so you don't have to hold down shift you can just click and drag and it will automatically add all the time I'll hold down alt to remove parts that I don't want in my selection here, here, here. and yeah I think this is okay so I could go back in history but that would just be very bad because we actually included levels as well so if I go back in history right now I'm actually going back and making it perhaps even darker yet if I started to draw you'll notice that it becomes a bit darker so I'll need to jump back before photo filter but ahead of level so I'm gonna I'm just gonna click to be this to be the source of the history brush the levels have been commenced at this point this is I'm clicking for it to place the history brush inside the icon next to levels do not click exactly on levels but on the icon next to it if you click on levels it's gonna jump all the way back to levels we don't want that but I want the history brush when I'm using that to be using this area of time to be uh, to be restoring from so now I can start drawing here and I have an opacity of like 50% and I can start removing the brownness and most of the time people do not want to remove brownness because brown is a nice color but let's just do it so this time the, the color of the sky actually looks much better I could also lighten it out a bit remember to include some feathering if you want to add lightness because otherwise we're going to be able to notice the transition will be bad between light and non-light so I'm going to modify I'm going to feather I'm probably just going to say tree because it's along an edge and then I'm going to just crank up the level that's image adjustment levels just add some lightness to it and perhaps some midtones. Okay, perhaps some color balance as well. Image adjustments, color balance, and just a bit of blue. Okay. I'm gonna deselect now. I don't want to change anymore to the sky, and I can just now start changing the image adjustments, um, color balance, or hue saturation. And I'll just start giving it more of one color or another. Oh, I actually like that. Just a bit more yellow. Yeah, and you can just keep on messing with these adjustments until you think they are fitting to each other. Remember, this is a two-dimensional layer. It has no 3D in it. Uh, this is a two-dimensional layer. It has no 3D in it. So this means that the lighting on this building is not necessarily how the lighting falls on this kit. You can try to flip him. You can try to flip him by saying edit, transform, flip horizontal. And perhaps then the lighting will be more proper compared to the original picture in the background. But you should really be looking for pictures which has the same composition of light as the background. Or the other way around, you should find a background which has the same type of lighting settings that uh, fits the character on the picture the object okay so notice one thing I'll just flip this kid around again yeah I'll just flip okay notice that this kid right here has some whiteness on the edge of him. That's from the original picture. So I did not remove enough. So I can always select him again. I'm going to command click the kid. Command click him. Then I'm going to say select, modify, contract. And I'm going to say perhaps two pixels. The feather value, the original feather value is still there. So it's still going to make a smooth transition when I delete some parts of him. Remember, the kid is now selected and I do not want to delete the kit. If I clicked to delete now, it's going to delete him and keep the two pixels. So I'm going to invert my selection, select inverse, and then I'm going to click delete. And that will make 
this border disappear. Nice. Okay, I think that's it for today. I need a break. Have a nice day.